Hello. A thank you for joining us. Our devotion for the day after Pentecost is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 16 through 21. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than the light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. The gospel reading for the day after Pentecost begins with a verse that has been called the Little Bible. Uh, many can recite this verse from memory, sometimes without even knowing what it means. Certainly they understand that God loves the world, but some let it go at that. For them, the gospel is the common truth that God is good, and that there's nothing to worry about. They will get into heaven one way or another. But now that we have studied Jesus' life from his birth to his ascension, we, now, we know how faulty this thinking is. The problem is, how can this fallen and evil world be united with a holy God. The fact that God loves us doesn't matter because there's something in our human nature that creates an insurmountable wall of separation between us. It could be broken down only by God giving up his son sacrificing him and letting him die for our sins. That is the only way for us to be restored to God. It happens when we're united through faith with the only begotten Son who died for us. Therefore, whoever believes in Christ will not perish but have eternal life. But you see, the text continues. Verse 17 and following, So without Christ, we would be lost. Not believing means belonging to a world that must perish. It's not a matter of judgment that an angry God will pronounce on some of us in the future. No, it's a judgment that is already impending on the world. The reason for this judgment is the fact that Evil pursues a course away from God. The world has said no to God and persists in its no. Yet God presented himself to us when the light, Jesus, came into the world. However, people love darkness more than the light. They don't want their deeds to be exposed. Uh, they prefer to live without God, apart from God. So there is something inside us that cannot be united with God. Unbelief means allowing that evil to control and consume us. But faith means receiving the light when it comes. This light has shined forth into the world since that first Pentecost, 
We are right now living in the time of the Spirit and the church. The light has come. And in that light, there is a possibility for salvation. And the Spirit is sent to help us to take advantage of this opportunity. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, you who illuminate our hearts and allow us to see the glory of Christ. Come to your church and help it witness with power and joy about God's love that drove him to give his only son so that we could be saved. Let the gospel be preached with power and authority. As joyous as it is, so everyone's eyes will be opened and everyone's heart will be filled with a longing for your salvation. Let your light shine in the darkness so we are drawn to the glory that shines forth from Christ's face. Holy Spirit, save us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Until next time, God's blessings.